Hey everyone, it's John at Evolve. Uh, hey, we wanted to talk today a little bit about tire wear on Model S and X and some of the possible solutions. Uh, so today we have a Model S large drive unit, so a performance drive unit, and rear cross member out of a Model S. Now, we're replacing this cross member from some damage on it, and we've, uh, we've pulled it, we've swapped the motor, it's back in, this unit's gonna go back up in, here in the car in a minute, and, uh, and then ultimately we'll have to do a, some calibrations and we'll have to perform another wheel alignment and so on. But we thought it would be a great opportunity to talk a little bit about rear tire wear on Model S and what you can possibly do. So what we're looking at here is a solution in aftermarket um, suspension components and these are from a company called Intuitive and we've used these in the past. And what these allow us to do is to make adjustments on camber as well as uh, toe on the rear of a Model S. Now, to explain a little bit, what is caster, what is camber, what is toe, what is thrust angle? So, toe-in. Uh, toe-in is if we're looking at the front of a vehicle here and we're looking at the front tires facing this way, up. Toe-in would be this way. So the tires themselves sort of are towed in or they are sort of towed out. And there's a lot of reasons for toe in and toe out when it comes to performance and handling. But there is a specification that's set for ultimate performance on a vehicle of toe in. Camber, if we're now, if we lay that car down flat and we're looking at the front wheels of the car, and now this is the front, and we're looking at the front wheels and back wheels, camber's this. It's the angle between the top uh, of the suspension travel and the bottom of the tire itself. So, we see no camber, negative camber, and positive camber on a vehicle. There's a third component in suspension called caster. Caster is not an adjustable component on the rear end of a vehicle, but caster, essentially, if we were looking down the side of a vehicle, let's say this is the passenger side front tire, Caster would be the angle between the top of suspension travel and the center of the wheel. So laid back this way or standing straight up and down. Caster tends to help a car recover and go straight, especially over bumps. You would notice if you have a caster problem on a vehicle, uh, if you hit a bump, it gets kind of squirrely. That's typically a caster. Uh, if you think about a chopper bicycle or something, you may have converted your bike as a kid when that tire's laid way out here, you can let go of the handlebars forever and it'll always go straight versus sort of a high wheel bicycle that you sit on the top of. Um, that thing, every bump in the road sends you in a million different directions, kind of like riding a unicycle and it would send you everywhere. Now, caster is not an adjustable component on, a, on the rear of a Model S or Model X, but just a quick explanation on what the three are. So commonly what you'll see on uh, tire wear for a Model S on the rear is they'll have a lot of negative camber. So if we're looking at the back of the car forward, in this case, this way, um, that the tires sit in like this. And so why do they have such negative camber? Well, ideally it's for handling. So if the, if the wheels are sitting like this, if I make a hard turn that way, uh, the weight of the vehicle is going to shift this way. And things like stabilizer links we can see here help to transfer that weight from one side to the other of the vehicle. But if all of the weight in the cornering is on this side of the vehicle, you want the biggest contact patch on the road, right? So if a, if a tire is square uh, and, you're, and all the weight is going onto this tire, you want that tire to do this. You want it to stand up and have the maximum contact patch on the road so that car doesn't slide that way. So when you have this really negative camber, when the weight transfers, if you look here, weight transfers, maximum contact patch on the side of the road where all the inertia is trying to slide the car off the road. Teslas, Model S's, and X's have a lot of that negative camber because they really handle well and they got a ton of weight. So if you know if you throw a performance Model S into a corner pretty hard, it just sticks. So the downside of that great tire performance is when I'm driving down the road, if that tire is square, the contact patch is so small, it's just here. So most of the time, and I'm exaggerating obviously, 
but most of the time, just this little corner of a tire is the only thing touching a road. I'll, I'll show you on a tire here. If we take a peek, if, you're, if you have a vehicle that has negative camber, that tire's running down, again, highly exaggerated, running down the road like this. So you could just imagine, if it's running down the road like this all day long, this corner of the tire, the inside, is going to wear out before the outside because this one almost never touches the road. So common to see on a, on a Model S and a Model X is the inside of this tire really starts to wear dramatically. And in a lot of cases, you'll see people get really no more than 15,000 miles or so out of that tire, which gets super expensive. Now, the tire compound has a lot to do with that as well. So it's not all suspension setup, but if you you have a super sticky uh, sort of R compound tire or soft compound tire, it's just going to wear faster. And if you use a harder compound tire, it won't. Then again, you don't get that same level of stickiness on the road. So there's just a quick example. And if you've had your tires replaced, you, you'll commonly see that this angle back here is the one that is impacted the most. So how do you solve that problem? Well, currently, if you have stock suspension on a Model S, there's no adjustment for that camber. You really can't do anything with it at all. Um, but here we have uh, a solution to be able to adjust camber. So with this component here, this forward upper control arm, if you notice, it's threaded on this side here. So what I can do is I can draw the top in. So I can shorten this, and if I shorten that, I create more negative camber. So let's say you want incredible performance and you don't care about tire wear and you want to throw this thing into a corner at you know, 100 miles an hour, you might bring this camber way in so you got that ultimate contact patch. But if you want to do the opposite and I don't throw my car into the corner at 100 miles an hour and want to preserve the tire a little bit, what I want to do is make that camber maybe more, a little more positive. With this component here, unlike a factory upper control arm, I can actually move this in uh, and out as well. So I can adjust my camber by installing this and, and improve my tire wear. On this rearward control arm link, uh, what we can see is I have the same threaded capability here. So this would control the rear toe end. And if I'm looking at this wheel, uh, if I shorten this, I'm going to bring the back in, which would send the front out, and I would create a positive toe on the rear. Wouldn't be a great idea, but I can change the toe on the rear to a degree much greater than what you can do from, uh, with, the, with the factory setting. So this allows me to set rear toe, um, uh, negative or positive, based on what, what the needs are, as well as to change the camber uh, here. Uh, one other component with this design is this sensor here is our ride height sensor. And so you can see how this simple link works. As this suspension would travel up, it's going to send this sensor uh, forward and backward, which then tells the car where in space the rear suspension is and can help to do things like activate ride height to be able to compensate for the suspension on the vehicle. So uh, a quick solution. Not incredibly expensive to do, um, but you can get better tire performance if you upgrade to some components like this where you can have more control over uh, toe and camber settings on the rear of your Model S. So, hope that's helpful for tire wear concerns. Um, any questions you have on anything related to this, anything we didn't cover, or more questions about what we're looking at. So as always, you can reach us at contact us at evolve-auto.com with any questions you may have, and uh, we're here to help. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Talk to you soon.